My name is Bill Whitliff. I'm a writer, producer. You know, screenwriting to me is, is much more like writing poetry. You already know everything there is to know about writing screenplays. Don't worry about what somebody else might think about it. Just, you know, cut loose. You, you already got the juice, which is uh, your heart. And I think it's a real mistake when young writers try to follow trends and try to make their version of the last successful movie they saw. And a lot of kids think, oh, I have to make Star Wars, I have to make Citizen Kane or Red River, or whatever. If you've got the itch, you got the ability to scratch. If you want to tell stories, be a participant in your own life. Make sure you're reaching down there and telling your own stories. But be careful reading these books about, here's how you write a screenplay, it's three acts, you know, by page seven you've got to do this, but you know, horses patoot. Living in those little Texas towns, I mean, I didn't feel like I belonged because there my brother and I were with our divorced mother. And, and I had the feeling all along in those early years, you know, that we were slightly outside. You know, we didn't quite belong because of our situation. And what was going on with me is I wanted to belong. And my vehicle was telling stories. But not a lot of film schools that I know really urge them to reach down with both hands in their own being, you know, to see what they have as, you know, a unique individual on this spinning globe. And that's where the great storytellers in whatever medium come from. Did Lonesome Dove, also did Legends of the Fall, did Country with Jessica Lange and Sam Shepard. The Raggedy Man. Black Stallion. The Perfect Storm. You know, Lonesome Dove really worked. I mean, it really worked. And that's one of the great miracles that it ever got made. Because it was a miniseries and it was a Western. And at the time we made Lonesome Dove, the, the only, only thing, thing deader, deader than Westerns, than Westerns were a miniseries. I tell you what, you ride on up there, clear out the Indian. And I tell you, when Robert Duvall put that hat on, and sucked his teeth and smoothed his mustache. I mean, he was transformed, you know. He, be he became Gus McRae at that moment. It was awesome. I saw that happen with Sissy Spacek, put on a little house dress for a film that I'd written called Raggedy Man, and looked at herself in the mirror, and all of a sudden, I mean, she became Nita Lama. But what's important, of course, is that those costumes be right, that those settings be right, that the furniture be right, because it makes them believe, oh, I really am in this other world, and they become an integral part of it. It's a real talent to be able to listen, stand in somebody else's shoes, and, and feel their heartbeat. I like it that we've got all this human stuff in the collection. You know, all these bits and pieces of careers and lifetimes. To have them just, uh, to me, makes it feel like uh, we're all family, we're all pals. As Terry Malick might say, we're all one big self. And what, of course, attracted me in the first place about doing a writer's collection was that it was storytelling. And, and for me, that's how the wisdom of a culture is passed from generation to generation through its stories, through the telling of those stories. I mean, this is a huge possibility we have, you know, and when it works, I mean, you're talking to the world. You know, Sally and I would hope the legacy it would leave is it preserves these cultural artifacts and also those cultural artifacts inspire other people who want to be creative. I mean, I can't think of a better legacy than that. <laughs>